Aloha once again, folks. Yes, we have amplification. This is getting ready for my move out into the world. So, but I think I need a new, a new mic stand because this one doesn't work well sitting down. It's also a little issue here where it plugs in. But this is the classic Sure Super 55 Deluxe mic for a phone. And um, another song here. Now, see, now I don't know. Like, I just want to talk back here comfortably, and I gotta lean in. And we're gonna do a band, another mid '60s British song. But this one would, I would say, more of a folky tune, probably influenced by Dylan, who just went electric around the time this one uh, came out. He was a big influence on all those British bands, the big ones, the small ones, and the little, little ones in between. And um, so I bet you not many of you are familiar with this song. Let's see if I am. But I am. As soon as that, when I got my 12 string, this was like one of the first songs I started playing. And I kind of just started playing it like from memory, which is the way I do a lot of my cover tunes for the bands and songs I know well. A lot of times I'll just start figuring them out. And then, then when I go back and listen to the actual song, the licks and stuff I come up with are nowhere near what they're doing. But I don't think it matters. Because if you, if you look into it or are aware or care, You'll see a lot of a lot of bands kind of, you know, the good ones. It's not a complete copy, you know, you gotta sometimes you can change it a lot or just just make it more playably fun, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. See what you think. See if you can guess who it is. There are hints. Everywhere you want, I always go. I always give in because they do know. They just say so, because it gives me that feeling inside that I know must be right. It's a singer, not the song. It's not the way you give and willingly Others do it without feeling me Giving me that same old feeling Inside That I know must be right It's a singer Not the song Same old places and the same old songs We've been going there for way too long There's something wrong And it gives me that feeling Inside That I know I must be right It's the same Not the song The singer, not the song. It's a singer, not the song. And of course, that's from the Rolling Stones. Mick's able to hit that high note, and he's probably did it when he was. 26, and I'm almost 30 years older than that now. It's no excuse. I probably couldn't have done it any better back then. Maybe. I don't know. But um, great tune. Great tune from uh, December's Children and Everybody's. Great album. I remember wanting that album so bad. I, I went in. The Stones were my first love, and I went in hard, and I just remember... You know, you're reading about them, that Rolling Stone encyclopedia of 
rock and roll. Which, here's a good story. When I, uh, the, the library in Norfolk, Massachusetts had that book, the Rolling Stones, and I think I still have it somewhere. But uh, I checked that out and I like cut out the whole section of the Rolling Stones. <laughs> Just literally sliced it right out of the book. Thinking they wouldn't notice. I'm like, who the hell else would check this book out? And of course they did eventually notice and we had to pay for it. And then they bought another, the Rolling Stones book that my sister had given me for Christmas, uh, the big one, a great classic, big white. I, I guess I should have maybe gotten some visual aids for this, but we might do this again. I, I made one, one, I, I was pretty good, I thought, but I did make one error there. And, um, so yeah, so that's where I got that. But you're reading all that stuff, and I remember Between the Buttons being a very big album that was talked about. And I got that one. And the see, and here's where the uh, the single thing that I talked about yesterday in the Itchy Koo Park video. On the British version of that album, there was not uh, Ruby Tuesday and Let's Spend the Night Together were not on that, whereas they were on the American version. Those were just singles in Britain. And they showed up in America. They were all on Between the Buttons and Flowers. And I remember wanting those albums so bad. December's Children, Flowers, and Between the Buttons. Which were the three albums that kind of came before their sat Satanic Majesty's Requests. And Aftermath, Aftermath, and then those three albums and the various singles, and then Satanic Majesties. Then after Satanic Majesties is when they did the four Greatest Hits albums, Beggar's Banquet, Let It Bleed, Sticky Fingers, and Exile on Main Street, and of course, Honky Tonk Women and Jumpin' Jack Flash singles in there. Child of the Moon, B-side, I think. Not sure if that ever even came out until more Hot Rocks. But, um, just good stuff. That's a good, good tune. That's just a good, that's just a, like a classic mid-60s British folk tune. Now, very simple, kind of Kind of stiff a little bit, but uh, just fun. Just kind of a fun, silly, silly one, kind of, you know? Nothing too deep. And I, I don't know if I agree about the singer of the song. Because to me, it's all about the songs. Like like Bob Dylan, the lyrics are incredible. But if the songs weren't any good, and what I mean by that, the, the lyrics and the music together and just being cool songs, I wouldn't be listening to it. Like, I don't listen to a lot of his, the early acoustic albums, you know? I like the rock and roll stuff. Same with Neil Young. You know, I'm, I'm a crazy horse man. Although I love, I love most of Neil Young stuff. I'm not a big fan of his uh, piano stuff, though. You know. There's that one on uh, Harvest that Man Needs a Maid. That's almost so bad, like the one you want to skip all the time, or I do. But, like, it's you've been listening to it for so long that it kind of has its place because it's so like it's just not good man i don't care what anybody says i don't like it but you don't you don't skip it and it because it's just like so bad you know one of those kind of and i guess it's not bad but i really a lot of neil young's piano tunes i don't really like and now we're talking about neil young so but that stones uh the december's children i, I got a poster of that in the uh, in the music room over there but i didn't feel like moving the amp in the, right in front of that. But it's the classic one where they're between the two buildings and Brian Jones is in the bottom kneeling down. And uh, it's just a great tune. That's the same album I've also done on Free Off that one, you may recall. You might want to go back and check that one out, like that video, and subscribe, of course. And this, is, this is the corner, the music corner. There, we've, of course, there's Keith. This is a new t-shirt, uh, you know, a couple months ago. I bought this one and then during Christmas season, December, after Thanksgiving, I wear all my Christmas shirts. So this one just kind of sat there and now it's back out. That's Keith. Right there. There's Keith's hero. Good story on that Chuck Berry. This was a uh, documentary that came out Within the last five years, maybe more towards the five years ago, but I had to go into Orlando to the Enzian, which is downtown Orlando, kind of in the leafy section. And uh, 
So I drive all the way out there, cool little place, you know, they got a bar and a little movie theater sort of thing. And they show a lot of documentaries and independent stuff. And I just asked about the poster. I'm like, what do you do with that poster? They're like, um, they didn't really have a good answer. I think they said, if a lot of people want it, we may auction it off or something, but you can sign up. So I signed my name there and it turned out I was the only person who wanted it. It's a great freaking poster. And um, Chuck doing the duck walk. And so, but the thing is, I live in Plant City. It's a good, it's about 90 minutes. And I-4 is like the most dangerous road in America. I think it's actually been voted that like five years in a row or something. But anyway, so I get the call the next day that I get the poster, but I have to drive in there that day. This is the shit I hate. If I don't get there by like five o'clock the next day, they're just gonna throw it away or something. I mean, with the, like that, I like can't roll that up and put it in the corner. So I have to drive into friggin' Orlando and like rush out. It just sucked, but it was worth it. Classic poster. And that, that was it. That's, uh, and I just read recently too, there's a thing, Jimmy Page talking about that tune he did on, uh, the deluxe reissue of Goat's Head Soup, that Scarlet song where he, he plays lead guitar with the, the Stones. And just talking about how how steady Keith's rhythm is and you know, and on the good the uh, twelve string, which he uses on Angie. So um so yeah, that's it. So let me listen back to this. And it sucks. I mean I'll probably put out the song because all this talking just I'm just off the top of my head. I could have grabbed some visual aids, but I didn't. I didn't think about that. And that's the whole key, that it's not planned out. And it's amazing, though. I read about this music stuff, and it's just like, for the most part, right in my head. And I can recite it years later. And then you talk about, like, chemistry or something, and it just cannot get in there at all. <laughs> Which is why I ended up with a history degree. True story. All right, folks. Um, yeah, so two uh, this weekend was mid '60s British music. Period. All right, folks. Over and out. <laughs>